Hey everybody, RetroPie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a trackball on your Raspberry Pi running RetroPie. So first thing that we're going to need before we get started is obviously a trackball. I'll put a link in the description of this video. If you don't already have one, you can jump down there, click that direct link, jump over to Amazon and pick one up. That's probably the best and most reliable place to pick up one. We're also going to need a keyboard slash mouse adapter. Also going to put a link in the description below for you to pick one of those up super easily. And we're also going to need either a keyboard or a gamepad controller that's already been set up with your RetroPie system because the trackball will not give you the ability to confirm selections within menus or games. So we're going to need that keyboard or gamepad controller in order to do that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna boot up our game collection card here. We're gonna jump into our configuration settings. That's typically gonna be the collection that has either a RetroPie or a Raspberry Pi logo. In this case, it has both. So you do wanna make sure that you are connected to your Wi-Fi prior to doing this step. If you aren't connected to Wi-Fi, this is not going to work. So if you need any help on how to connect Wi-Fi, check the description below. We'll put a direct link in there to our tutorial on how to connect the Wi-Fi on your RetroPie system. So we're assuming everybody has already connected to Wi-Fi. So we're gonna jump in here to our configuration settings. We're gonna go down to that next option down there, which says network tools. We're gonna to select that and we're gonna go down to what is my IP. So we're gonna hit that. It's gonna load for a few seconds on here and then it's gonna display our IP address. So I've gone ahead and blocked this out just to keep my IP address private, but go ahead and write down your IP address. So I'm gonna write mine real quick here. So now we can go ahead, once we're done, we've written down our IP address. Go ahead and hit okay. We're going to leave this booted up and we're gonna leave our screen exactly where it is. You could back out to the uh, previous menu selection if you'd like, but we're gonna jump over onto our computer now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to our computer. So if you're running Windows off of a PC like I am, this is going to be exact. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to the bottom left corner, and we are gonna click down into this little box here, and we are gonna type in our IP address. So what we have to do is we have to do backslash, backslash, and then we type in our IP address. So again, I'm gonna be blocking this out just to keep my IP address private here, but um, we're gonna enter this in. Once you've entered that in, you're gonna hit the enter button on your keyboard, and this is going to open up your file system for your RetroPie micro SD card. So now once we've opened this up, what we need to do is we need to jump into our configs. So you can see right here, we have our configs file. We'll double click right there. And once we open up configs, we are gonna to go to our all folder, which should be the um, somewhere close to the top because this is in alphabetical order, depending on what you have on your card here. So Right here, it's the third one down for me. And now we're gonna go down to RetroArch Core Options, which you can see is right here. And it's usually gonna be spelled out the same way, RetroArch-Core-Options. So we'll double click here. So now this is gonna open up into usually your notepad. It could go into a couple different other options. Typically it's gonna be the equivalent of notepad though. So it's gonna just be a text list just like this. So now we're gonna go in here and we have to add in a couple different lines here. So we're actually gonna navigate down to M because we need to go into MAME. MAME is going to be the emulator that you use for your trackball games. So we'll drop down here. All right, so once we get down to MAME 2003 here, we are gonna actually look for the line that says MAME 2003 underscore mouse underscore device space equals mouse in parentheses. So that's gonna be right here actually. So what I recommend doing is just go to the end of that line and hit enter. So that's gonna create a space right here. So I'm gonna give you some additional lines to enter in here. I'm actually going to put these in the um, description below too. So you can just go down there and copy and paste them in. So I'm gonna actually list all of the uh, three lines that we need for MAME 2003 and the four lines that we need for MAME 2016 in the description. So you just have to go through there, make sure that you don't put duplicates in. So as you can see here, this line actually, the MAME 2003 underscore mouse underscore device space equals mouse in parentheses that I mentioned already. We do need to make sure that's in here. Now, not everybody is going to have this one. In my particular cards case here, it's already in here. This is one that we need. So if you don't have this line, you need to add it. So you are going to see that in the um, description list that I put together here. So if you already have it in there, just make sure that you don't add it a second time. There's no reason to do that. So next line that I need to add on here is going to be MAME 2003 underscore dial underscore 
device space equals and then mouse. So there's another one we need to enter now. So we're just going to hit the uh, page down button on our keyboard just to drop down into that next line here. And this one's going to be MAME 2003 underscore trackball underscore device space equals space mouse. So that is all you need to enter here. So right below that now, since we're not adding anything additional, is going to be this MAME 2003 underscore NVRAM underscore bootstraps space equals enabled. So again, you don't have to add that one in. I'm just pointing that out so you know exactly where these different lines that we just added need to fall in here. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop down to the MAME 2016. So if we just scroll down here, you'll find all of these. And now we need to enter four of these in. And now depending on your card, you may have some of these, you may not. So you just have to go through the list of four that I'm gonna put in the description below again, and just make sure that you don't put any duplicates in here, just put in the ones that you're missing. So I'm gonna point out here, this is where I wanna start. This is going to be the MAME 2016 underscore mouse underscore enable space equals, and this one actually says disabled. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually gonna change this to enabled. So I'm gonna backspace the disabled portion of this out and I'm going to type in enabled. And now I'm gonna hit enter to create a new line. And now I'm gonna do the next one, which is going to be MAME 2016 underscore dial underscore device space equals mouse. So that one is good to go. So we're gonna hit enter again, create a new line. And the next line we need to enter in here is going to be MAME 2016 underscore mouse underscore device space equals and we're going to put again mouse. And now we have just one more. So we're going to hit enter once again and we are going to type in MAME 2016 underscore trackball underscore device space equals and you guessed it mouse again so that's all we need to do i'm just going to highlight the line below it again you don't have to enter this one in i'm just highlighting this so you know exactly where this should end up and it's going to be the mame 2016 underscore read underscore config space equals and then to save again that's not to be entered in that's just so you know exactly where these fall so again just to be super clear i'm going to be putting the three lines that we need to add for mame 2003 in the description below as well as the four lines that we need to add for MAME 2016 in the description below. And once again, again, just to be super clear, super annoying for you, but I wanna make sure that this is 100% clear and everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about here. You do not want to put any duplicates in. So if you find that one of these off of the list that you find in the description below is already entered in into your cards list here, don't put it in once again. Just skip that one and make sure that you put the additional ones that are not included onto your list. So that's going to do it here. We're going to actually go here and hit file at the top and we're going to hit save. Make sure that you save this. If you do not save this and you just go ahead and X this out, I actually think that if you X this out, it'll ask you if you want to save it, but um, you definitely want to make sure that you save that. Otherwise, all of these lines that we just created on here are not going to save and you are not going to be able to get a trackball up and running on your system. So I just saved that, I'm gonna exit out here so we can go ahead and X everything out. Now we're gonna jump back over to our RetroPie system and we'll take it from there. All right, so we're back over to our RetroPie system here. And what we actually need to do now is we need to hit our start button and jump into our main menu. And what we're gonna do is jump down to quit and restart our system. And the reason for that is we were obviously accessing our card live from our computer. So those changes have not taken place on the card yet until we restart. So we're gonna go down to quit and we're gonna go down to restart system here. And we're gonna select that and allow our system to fully reboot.
All right, so we've fully rebooted our RetroPie system here. So the hard parts behind us, all the settings have been put into place here. So we are ready to just connect our trackball to our Raspberry Pi and jump into some games. So I do want to mention, I do have my Re gamepad controller here. This is what I'm using to actually make selections because once we plug in our trackball, we're going to be able to navigate with this, but we're not going to be able to make any selections because as you can see, there's no buttons on here. So to insert coins into our arcade games where we utilize the trackball, we're gonna to need to use the gamepad controller here as well as to make different selections both in game and in our menus. So I'm using this re gamepad controller here, which I think is great for um, anybody that's jumping into RetroPie and doing a lot of settings changes because it's got your gamepad controller side, which is absolutely phenomenal. But on the other side here, we have a full keyboard. So we actually have this little toggle switch up here. We can switch it to either our gamepad controller side or our keyboard side. Really a great addition to anybody's uh, setup because it has everything integrated into one. So I usually use this when I'm going into settings a lot. I actually have this connected to my arcade setup because I'm able to jump into games, you know, with these actual controls on here, as opposed to the arcade controls that are built in. If I find a title that just doesn't work super well on the arcade controls, and then I also have access to a full keyboard on here if I have to go into my Wi-Fi settings or um, any of those advanced settings where you need to utilize a keyboard. So moving on to the trackball here. So the first thing we need to do here with our trackball is we need to make the connection from the trackball itself to our adapter here, which converts it over to USB. So I do wanna make a quick little note here. Inside here, there's some prongs that you have to line up with the corresponding holes in the adapter. Make sure that you line those up before actually sliding them together. You don't wanna just put them into place and then rotate these until those prongs line up with the holes. Reason for that is the prongs are super flimsy in here, so you can definitely easily bend or break those. So definitely don't twist them into place. I did that and I ended up having to go in here and straighten out all the prongs inside here it was definitely a pain so make sure that you're careful just line them up and push them together um, they will click into place if you find that you have to force them then they're likely just not lined up perfectly so just don't be a brute like i was initially be super careful when connecting those now once they're connected you can take your usb and insert that into the usb port on your raspberry pi so i'm going to do that right now once that connection has been made, you'll notice that your trackball does light up. In this case, it lights up green. So now we're going to go with our controller here and navigate over to our trackball games. I have a whole collection here dedicated to them. So I'm going to jump into Golden T 3D. We'll let this load in for a couple seconds here. And we're going to be utilizing again this controller to add our coins and to hit start since our trackball does not have any buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert coins with my select button here. And once we get to this page where we can select how many players are gonna be playing, we can actually use our trackball to navigate up and down. So you can see that the trackball is able to navigate those. Now you don't have to utilize that. You can use your controller here to do the same thing. So I'm going to make my selections, get this game started hit start we'll select where our location is going to be and now we're fully going to be using the trackball from here on out so you can see here now it may take a couple seconds for it to load in so you can see I'm able to wind back and let's see if I can do this while not utilizing full motion because I'm filming this so I definitely sliced it there but you can see that it does work perfectly I'm gonna slide this aside so I have a little bit more room wind up and swing so now i haven't played this in quite some time so i'm definitely not going to get a great score here but i'm going to do some full demo videos with the trackball too which will be separate from this video so we'll end up putting some of those links in the description below so you can check those out but you can see clear as day that the trackball is working phenomenally on here my skill level just isn't up to par all right, so I'm gonna jump out of this game. I'm just going to bring over my controller here, hit my hotkey functions, which is start and select. It's gonna exit me from that game. And let's just check out one other game just to make sure that everything's working. Let's jump into world-class bowling. This was another one of my favorites. 
All right, so I'm gonna put that aside. So now we're gonna be working entirely off the trackball, side to side, ends up moving the ball so you can kinda pick where you want to be when you launch this ball, back to wind up just like in Golden Tee. And then we're gonna follow through forward in order to launch that ball towards these pins. Perfect, strike on the first try. All right, so again, you can see that the trackball is working and performing exceptionally well here. So that's gonna do it for today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, smash the like button for me. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different videos based around retro gaming. Tutorials like this one, gameplay demos, product reviews, just a ton of great stuff on here. So be sure to subscribe and check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.